Welcome to the Hooker Car Show. We're here today in Hooker, Oklahoma, September 8th, 2018. I'm Sean Barbary. On the camera is Emmanuel D. Herrera. We're with PTCI, and this is one of our exclusive programs that we come to every year. Uh, it's one of the things we enjoy the most. Uh, on the way in, we saw some fantastic cars, uh, saw some people that we want to talk to, and we are looking forward to an amazing day. So stick around. All right, the first interview of the day uh, is Robert Jandrew. Yes, sir. And you are from Mount Pleasant, Tennessee. Tennessee, yes. ladies and gentlemen, made the trip of how many miles? Right at a thousand. A thousand miles. Now, Robert is a relative, your cousin? My wife's cousin. Wife's cousin of Tony Mathis that works at PTCI. So that's exciting stuff right there. And um, he's brought this 1950. Buick. Buick. <laughs> But it's not your ordinary 1950 Buick, because I know, I see a diesel engine in here. That's right, it's 5.9 Cummins. Tell and us all about it, tell us about the car. Where'd you, where'd you find it? Well, I found the car in a chert pit, sitting on the ground, all rotted out on the bottom, and uh, just really liked it. And my son's got a rat rod with a 5.9 in it, got really good fuel mileage, and I thought, well, we need to put one of these in a car to where we can travel. So that's what we do, we, uh, we put that motor in the car, and. It's just a great car, it travels well, it gets about 25 miles a gallon on average, so we can afford to Now why the 5.9, so. is that? It's just a good uh, engine as far as it's uh, pretty simple and basic, it's all mechanical, you know, and uh, you know, easy to get parts for and pretty reliable. And like I say, you know, it's the size is about right for, for most engine compartments. I yeah. noticed as this, I'm looking at it here, I yeah. never thought about it before. But. Well, this car is a great candidate for it because it had a straight eight in it, and they're pretty much the same dimensions. There you go. And motor uh, mounts and everything kind no, of. No, we fabricated the frame and built everything you see as far as that go. We updated the chassis, it's four wheel disc brakes, power steering, power brakes, automatic overdrive, air conditioning. You know, it's very comfortable. Uh, now, what, what does an engine like this come out of, like a Dodge pickup or something? Well, or? it does. This one particular one came out of a school bus. Oh, I got but you. We've uh, done a little work to it, put injectors in it, and turned the pump up a little bit. So it's got a little more than it had. Transmission? It's a overdrive Chrysler out of like a Dodge pickup truck. Okay. Oh, they bolt up? Yes. They that's come out cool. from behind a Cummins. Oh, okay. Out right. of a Dodge hey, truck. Yeah, well, that's you know. kind of cool. So you like the car. I like yes. the car. It's got some really cool lines. Yeah, I, that's what. I really like it. It's got that couch back. I don't know what people call it. I was called the couch Buick, back. You Buick called it a jet back, if I'm not a mistaken. Jet back? For a Buick. Yeah. When I look at the side of these, I always just looks like you would be sitting in it with the couch, oh, yeah. the, the sidearm deals, you know? Yeah, no, it's a beautiful thing. Tell me, tell me one of the most fun stories about the car so far. I just being able to travel in it and afford to go places. And I mean, you know, we have fun everywhere we go. We've been very fortunate. We've been down to West Palm, Florida, and you know, people just like the car. That's the that's the now, fun did, of it. Did you, you drive to... this down here? Oh yeah. Whoa! Yeah, we drove it the whole way. That is a driver a story. Driver, driver. It goes the whole everywhere. Way. Wow, that is great. And I guess we've got a 200-pound pot belly pig that goes with us most of the time. And <laughs> if it wasn't so hot, we were worried about it being hot. We probably yeah. brought her today. Yeah. But, uh, that we get a lot of looks and a lot of fun with that. You know, so <laughs> probably some pictures with it sitting yes. behind the wheel and stuff yeah, like well, that. Laid across the back seat, it is the back seat. When she lays. <laughs> That's awesome. But, uh, How long did it take you to build it? Uh, roughly about two and a half years of weekends and evenings. That's not you bad. Know. Uh, it wasn't too bad. And I had to use donor cars and parts right. and pieces, you know, to, to make it get back together again. That's but great. But still got a lot of work left to do to it. But we'll just get it out when we Anything can. Anything else you want to leave our, our uh, viewers with on the way out? Uh, you I, know, I, I kind of don't even know what to ask you about it because it's so unique. It's just different. Yeah, it's a 50, but most guys with Buick, it's got a 51 grill in it, so okay. it more appear to that. But other than that, you know, I don't know anything else to tell you about well, it. Well, that is a grill, isn't it? Yeah, it is. My gosh. Yeah, it's all solid. You don't want to mess around steel. with that bad no, boy. No, it, it, uh, I think it'd do some damage if it hit a new I car today. I think so, today. too. Well, Robert, yeah. I really appreciate you taking a well, few minutes you. and talking to us I about it. it. We're going to take the camera, run around the car, and get some close-ups, if you don't mind. Not at all. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.
Kevin Thompson, Thompson with us here now from Bentonville, Arkansas. He's, he's brought this beautiful Dodge Dart, it's a 72, it's a swinger. I've yes. never seen a swinger. I, I don't know what that even means. So that's what caught my attention, other than the fact that it's just a great looking car. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that package. What's a swinger package? Uh, it's just a model number. It's something that uh, Dart built on a smaller A-body style for a uh, more of an economy car, a fun economy car. They put a 318, a slant six, or a uh, 340 in this was the, the high dollar package. This one has the 318 in its stock. Oh, it's got the 340 um, double scoop hood on it. Uh, so ah, it's, it's kind of a clone. Me. That's what juked me up. I thought it was, yeah, I it's thought a bit it was of a clone. It's a bit of a clone, but it's not a 340 uh, numbers matching car. So it was a 318 out of the factory. It's still got the 318 in it. What was the horse pattern that in that for back then? Do you know? Uh, I think it had it came with a two-bar carburetor, and it was just over like about 150, I think. Oh wow! For that, so. but you put the 340 heads on it, the aluminum headers, a four-bar carburetor, and it'll get close to 300 with the right exhaust on it as well. well that's a lot. So better. it doesn't take much to, to double it. <laughs> that's right. Now, how long have you owned the car? I've only owned it since uh, March. Oh, okay, so you're just a brand new owner. Brand new car. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. It's my first my first muscle car, so. Okay, you just got it. Where did you find it? How did you get it? Tell us the story of you acquiring the car. Uh, my brother got me uh, interested in one. He had a 66 Chevelle in Durango, Colorado. He wanted to bring me, but couldn't come to terms and got me looking locally around Bentonville and found this one in uh, Springfield, Springfield, Missouri. Gotcha. And uh, love the color, love the stance, love the wheels. Uh, truth be told, I didn't know that much about the Dodge Darts. Uh, I had to do some research on them to find out what they were, but uh, whoever built it and painted it, they did an excellent job, I thought, and I thought it was just a pretty car, and it'd be fun. You know, there's, I'm not a guy that's going to build one from scratch, but there was a lot left to do, you know, as far as brake suspension. Um, the engine could use a little more beefing up to make it a little more fun, so I, did, I dove in. <laughs> well, compliments to your choice, because this is actually one of the coolest cars of, of I think, that Dodge made. Mm -hmm. Fun stories about this around about the 72 era is we had John DeLorean that was working for Chrysler, right? Yep. Working for uh, Pontiac, actually. And he and those other guys, they were having these headbutts, you know? Yep. Let's build something that looks like a sleeper, but put a big engine in it. And that's what I thought we had here. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's <clears throat> that's some of the backstory of, of these cars. Is right. th those kind of guys were doing this really great work behind the scenes of these companies. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna keep it forever? Are you just gonna are you gonna build a collection? I don't know yet. Uh, so far, I like it. My wife, she shortly after this, we got her a 2008 Mustang GT convertible. Nice. That it had some work done to it, so it's a little peppier than stock and right. Pretty fun. So so far, uh, the garage only allows for two extra toys, and <laughs> that's probably where we'll stop for now. <laughs> build a bigger garage. <laughs> that might happen. We'll yeah, see. There you go. Well, hey, I really appreciate you taking a few minutes to talk to us about it. We, sure. We'd like to take the camera and go around the car and see how we you know, get some closer. That's, that's awesome. Thank you so much.
we've got Leanne Irvin with us. She's from Perryton, Texas, and she's brought this beautiful 1972 Plymouth uh, Scamp. Now, we just talked to the guy with the swinger. Now we've got a Scamp. I didn't know that Dodge and Chrysler and Plymouth had all those different kinds of things. Talk to us a little bit about those different signatures. What, what are the differences in, in some of those different, like the Scamp, the Swinger, the whatever? Well, the, the Swinger is made by Dodge. Right. The Scamp is made by Plymouth. Okay, so that's their different, their different deal there. cousins, basically, is what they are. Okay. How long have you owned the 72? Uh, we've had it for about two years now. We totally redid the engine. We had It's a 318. We had it bored 40 over. Redid the transmission. It's a 727 transmission. Right. Um, basically, we went all the way through it and restored it. What what, a, what gave you the want to get one of these? What about the, this kind of car made you want to get it? I don't know. I just liked it. I liked the muscle. I, I liked the, you know, just... I just liked it. When I saw it, I liked it. And I was it's like, got a cool look, right? Yeah. It's got a cool, fast look, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, so you've owned it for two years. It took you, what, what, was it in this shape when you got it? No, no. It's okay. So let's talk about the rest of it. Well, we took it out on one trip and we had problems with the engine overheating. And for, unfortunately, we didn't make it back from that trip. So from there, we started. We started with the new, I mean, rebuilding the engine. Um, did it all locally there in Perryton at J&J okay. &J Motor. Uh, nice. Shout out J&J. Woo! Woo hoo! Right, <laughs> uh, just a little bit at a time, that's what we do, you know. Paint original? Paint was the way it was when we bought it. Okay. Interior was original? Yes. Okay. Who did all the work on the car before you got it? We you got know? it from Arlington, Texas. I really don't know. We bought it from Classical Gas Industries. So. Gotcha. Okay. So, all right. Yeah. So, you were saying off camera that you've been through the engine, you've been through the transmission. The only thing you haven't been through is the rear end. Yeah, it's got it's low geared. It was this car was set up for drag racing. Gotcha. We don't want to drag race it. We want it to be a, just a cruiser. A touring car. Yeah. Get those gears up there higher. Yeah. We can get some. Yeah, yeah, I understand. But it is fun to have a low gear if we yeah. go match the gas yeah. and go fast, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we're not going to go too high with it. We're just going to keep it at a normal. So, are you guys going to get more cars like this? Is this your one love and you're done? Are you you're gonna build well, a stable he's look, of. He's looking at a vet, so he wants to get another one. But like the other guy said, your garage is only big enough for so many. I know, and I keep thinking, just build a bigger garage. <laughs> That's the sim simplest thing, you know. Well, I really appreciate, Leanne, the fact that you let us come over here. And actually, I appreciate the fact that she was listening to the interview previous and said, hey, if you like that, you'll like mine. And she wasn't wrong, I do like this. So. Uh, any, any fun fact that you haven't told us? Um, What's the most fun story you've got about the car? Your favorite memory? Driving past O'Reilly Auto Parts where I work and showing the guys off. There you go! A little vindication, huh? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> mine. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to take the camera, we're going to walk around and get some close ups. Okay. I really appreciate Thank you taking you. time to give us some information. Thank you. Thank you. here with us now from Borger, Texas. He's got this immaculate 1970 Dodge Challenger and it's a beautiful car just by looking at the car but when you look inside there's a mammoth under the hood. I don't know how big that engine is. That's but actually it's a mammoth. A, it's a 472 or a 426 Hemi motor that was bored and stroked to a uh, 572 cubic inch. Motor. There you so go. It dynoed on the machine at 672 horsepower. That's so. what we're talking about, boys and girls. So. No substitute for cubic inches. No. Right? Right. All right, Rob, tell us about the car. How long have you owned it? I've had the car for about eight years. Uh, it originally was a uh, quarter miler over in Amarillo. Who owned it? 
Uh, Dennis Matthews. Never saw originally. it. Never heard of him. So we stripped it all down, started all over, and built it up the way we wanted it. Because when they put it on the strip, they usually gut it the interior. Yes. Caged the inside. Well, they didn't have a cage on this one. It wasn't to that point. Good. But, that's that's um, really hard to get back from when you do that. Yeah, we kind of kept it. There was some guy that was going to cut it up and make a funny car with it. So we were oh. able to prevent that from oh, happening. Oh, thank so, goodness. Bless yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we didn't want to see that happen. All right. So eight years. What now? Was the paint? Was, was this the paint on the original car that you no, got? No, the paint was red, white, and blue. Oh, okay. So, well, patriotic. I dig that. But maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I I've seen like some of those Dodge better. red, white, and blue cars. Yeah. Now, what yeah. was that a factory thing? Uh, the red, white, and blue. Yeah. No, no. Okay. that was just some of the racing things. Gotcha. You know, I so. gotcha. All right. Yeah. So you chose these colors, which, by the way, good job. Well, thank you. Whoever did this pinstripe. Yeah, they were very off, good. Right. Yes. That's a straight pinstripe for freehand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, top notch. Top notch. Talk to us about the inside. The interior was done by a good friend of mine, Richard Lawrence. Um, Knew him from high school. Uh, the interior is still original look, just different color, different material. Right, it's really pretty. So Looks yeah, brand new. Yeah, he's the guy that kind of got me hooked up to the paint and body man, and uh, and the mechanic to help me put all this together. Oh, gotcha. So. All right, so let's talk about the power plant. Who did the engine? The motor was built in Amarillo by Pan Allen Performance Engines, uh, okay. Don Thomas. Okay. So yeah, they did all the work, and then we, we just talking about the billet crank. We talking about. Uh, what H beam rods we're talking about? Is it a full roller motor? Is it? Yeah, it's roll all roll uh, cammed all rollers. Yeah. Gotcha. So, uh, board and stroke, like I said, uh, 572 for more horsepower. Right, right, right. So I bet it sounds pretty waspy. Yeah, it does. Now, is it is it a daily driver? Can you drive this? I, I do normally drive it to the car shows, and I do drive it around town. Uh, just didn't drive it today because of the weather. Wasn't right. sure what was going to happen. Right. So. Four-speed automatic? I didn't notice. Five-speed. Five-speed. It's got a five-speed tra tremec transmission in nice. it. Nice. Nice. Comes yeah. off hard, goes through it. Yes. It's got a, uh, tre uh, like I said, tremec five-speed. Got a Dana 60 rear end under it. Gotcha. It's got a Hotchkiss suspension under it. Nice. So So what's the plan? Are you going to keep this forever? Is this going to be part yes. of the family? For <laughs> well, as long as I'm around, it will. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know what will happen after I'm gone, but... <laughs> I got two boys, they can do whatever they as want to do. As long as you can keep your me hooks on it though, it's yours, right? All right, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So tell me, uh, tell me what's the what's the most fun story about the car that some when you think of your car, what is the story that comes to your mind that you want to tell your friends about? Oh, just mainly the process of putting it all together because I met a lot of good people and had a lot of fun helping putting it together and Right, uh, family, friends, wife, yeah. talk to your wife off camera and that's yeah. how we tried to track you down for a while, and uh, yeah. of course, yeah, it was really funny because I was trying to get her to commit you to the interview, and sometimes people don't want, don't want to talk on camera, and she said, well, he might do it. No, he, she said, he maybe will do it, and I said, well, that's not a yes. I need a yes, you know, <laughs> but uh, so she sounds like she's she's fun in the mix there. Yeah, she loves it. She likes, she won't drive it, but she loves to ride it. So. Oh, you got to get her to drive it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's like, that's like. The, the payday at the end of the of the job you got to drive it yeah i'm driving it but she's not comfortable with, with the way it oh. shifts so got a little, got a little it's got a little bit of lope to it she's not used to that i so. understand i understand but yeah it's been a fun car i can imagine um yeah if you don't mind we'll take the camera around on the sure. way out is there anything that you you wanted to tell us that we didn't think to ask ah, i'm good <laughs> okay we're gonna enjoy take, the car you guys look all you want take to the camera hey we might get you to fire it up for us would you i would okay awesome thank you Let so me, much uh, put... all right what'd you bring sir what'd you bring today <laughs>
Okay, uh, we've been looking for a Corvette to, to come and highlight. We saw Jeremy uh, Wellburn's 63 Corvette. Uh, he's from Lawton, Oklahoma. Yes, sir. And this is, is this like an original road race car? Well, they built five original Grand Sports in 1963, and uh, GMs had a no racing uh, policy at the time. So they told Zora Dantov, the chief engineer, to destroy all five of them. Oh, wow. Well, he said no way, and he, he sold them, three of them to private racers, and two years later he hid two and sold them later to Roger Penske. Oh. Okay. So this is actually, it's on a 63, it's, it's a registered 63 Corvette. It is not one of the original five. Oh, okay. But it is um, a very, very high quality replica of those original, of the awesome. chassis number one original race car. Story. It's a really cool deal. And the, the, another thing about this car that's really special and important is that the engine in it is an L88 um original new old stock it's only been in this car it's a 69 date date stamped l88 which is what zora duntoff sent to roger penske in 67 they, they built those they made these l88s from 67 to 69 right and sent the engines to him to put in the car when he sold it to him so that's what this has in it so it's so, now is that a 427 yes okay 427 yep. i yep. thought i remembered the number yeah and um, it's uh that was a lot of power back in the day. 506. Well, they they advertised it. I think at 400 and some 435. 435. 435. 435 that's right. And um, and at, they dynoed them at 560. Right. So you know, it was, is that <laughs> not crazy? On a 2300 pound car. That made this thing a rocket ship. Yeah, it is a rocket ship <laughs> <laughs> with that engine in it. I've had it on the track and had a lot of fun with it out there. And it is, yeah, it'll just it'll just go all day. <laughs> now, Jeremy, tell me who did the uh, the the resto mod? Who who okay. put it in this shape? Yeah, sure, uh, Brian G uh, Guardiani uh, is the gentleman that built it. He built it for a man in um, out in California about 12 years ago and then this past january i bought it from that individual oh cool and so that's yeah and that's how i wound did, up did he it. just put it up for sale online or yeah, something actually, or actually i'm a i've got a i've got a 2017 grand sport that i had built and then we re, we did a conversion of sorts to it a customization to it of a replica or a tribute car to the rep to this car okay I to got the you. original and then when this came up for sale the guy that was selling it his son found me and saw what I had, and he's like, "My dad's about to sell this car. Are you interested?" There you go. So now I've got the <laughs> I've got the 17 tribute car to this car, and then then I wound up getting this car. That's great. Now, what so. what made you fall in love with uh, Corvette? Um, Something back in your I've, childhood. Yeah, back or? when I was a kid. You know, I was just just always loved Corvettes. Grew right. up in the 70s and 80s, and you know uh, those early 70s the chrome bump you know the chrome oh, bumper those cars great corvettes. yeah that's one. i, I and, wasn't uh, so much in love with the early 80 corvettes right and, <laughs> exactly <laughs> up until they kind of got over being silly yeah yeah and the epa got out of them the yeah, government right, got out right. of the engines in right. <laughs> a little bit we get some power in them again God, there's so many fun stories you already told me about the car but there's surely more well uh, there's a couple of there's a couple of autographs under the over here on that, the that on would the be dash. something to talk right. about. Uh, Doug Hooper and Dick Goldstrand were the two original racers for Penske in the original chassis number one car. They're the oh, ones wow. that raced that car, and they have autographed the you know the dash on this car. That's um, nice. Yeah, and one of them has passed away in the last wow. few years, and That's so. Sad. But it's uh, it is sad, but it's got their autographs on it, um, and and the rest of them I mean, is two tube uh, tubular chassis uh, frame. I mean on it, and um, you know it's just got everything's right. Uh, minus the suspension but there's actually a gentleman in dallas texas who owns duntop motor company who actually owned one of the original grand sports you're kidding from like 67 to 69 one of the race cars right and he raced it and then he sold it oh wow all right well several years ago he wanted to start he wanted to start building these replicas okay and right. he didn't build this one but he's uh he, he wanted to start building replicas he got in contact with gm with zora duntop's wife who was still alive at the time got licensing and he can build continuation series grand sports and so he's going to put the uh, we're going to go down and put the uh, the actual suspension on the car as well oh cool uh, that's the next step to kind That'll of take it fun. take it up to the next level that, of, that's uh, neat you know, just kind of just, continue that story yeah that's exactly really good. and put that on it so that's that's kind of the next step for this car that's really good <laughs> um it's a really beautiful car thank you uh, it's been I, a lot I would of fun. imagine it sounds pretty good oh yeah sounds sounds amazing so um maybe i could get you to bust it off for us yeah we could do that <laughs> No, I've that's got, okay. We can. I mean, I've got to just, I've got to turn the battery on 
over there and then uh, fire it up. So if we want to do that. Original uh, old uh, not HEI ignition. I mean, this is. Yeah, it's built right. This is. Uh, it's interesting, the, of course, the, the power steering over there with the access door right there where you're standing mm -hmm. to the uh, reservoir and so forth. All right, so the battery's turned back on. <laughs> you don't know how many times I've tried to start it with the battery not turned on. <laughs> I just, just don't start it with it in gear. Of course, That's you, all I care. <laughs> you, you, get, you get in the car and then it's like, ah, dad, come it and move this real quick. It's just so nice and moldy and formed and... All right, so... And you say it weighs 2,700? Uh, 2,300 pounds. 2,300, my sir. Race fuel! <laughs> It's it's 110 uh, regular. Well, that makes my heart happy, and uh, I'm <laughs> Mine a, too. It always I'm puts a, a big smile block Chevy guy, 427, <laughs> aluminum headed, 427. Yes, There's sir. nothing. That, it just doesn't get any better than that. with us now Gene 80 he's from Amarillo Texas he's brought this really 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 sharp looking 1934 Model A Gene you, sh you tracked us down over there and said you've got to come and look at this pickup so we we made a point to come and look at it yes it is beautiful I'll give it to you that's a beautiful beautiful vehicle this, tell, tell us all about it this pickup was my granddad's pickup uh-huh and uh, as you can see down there it's kind of was Gone to the bad, bad it, side. It was in the field, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I rode in this pickup and drove it as a kid. So what year would that have been? What, uh, that, would have, that, that would have been um, probably in uh, the early 50s. Early 50s. In the late 40s, yeah. Early okay. 50s, yeah. Okay. 80s, 50s, yeah. And... Uh, uh, Granddad gave uh, the pickup to me and my younger brother, and and we took it and was going to have the uh, took the old man manual brakes off and was going to put hydraulic brakes on it. Right. And that part got started, but the mechanic that was doing it decided he was going to close up shop, so he took and 
throwed everything in the back end of the pickup. Oh my! And that's kind of what we had when we got through. Oh my goodness! Are yeah, you he just and, gave up on it. Yeah, he just gave up on it. So wow. We um, uh, it's been in the barn for years. Yeah. And my younger brother passed away, and so his siblings told me to take it. And so I took it and restored. It took me three years to restore it. Okay, good. So you did the work on this. You, this yes, I did everything but the painting. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really great. Yeah. That's really great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's got a bunch of old sentimental meaning to you. Oh, sentimental yeah. Sentimental value Absolutely. for sure. Absolutely. But from what I see, it's just the, the reclaiming of something that was lost to the world like that. You know, it's just out there in the field or whatever, yeah. yeah. or backyard or wherever yeah. it was. Yeah. Yeah. That's and you, uh, you took the time to put this back into our world. Uh, I appreciate that, and yeah. I want to thank you for doing stuff like that. Thank you. Thank That's you, really yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, tell us about it. Tell us about what, what you, the details of what you've had to do. Well, the, the original engine, I uh, was planning on going back with it, but it had a crack in it that I couldn't use it, so I had to buy another, but I did go back. It was originally a V8, uh -huh. and I went back with the flathead. But this is a, a, a Mercury, which the Mercury's was a 90 horse and the other one was a 60 horse. Oh, okay. So I got a little more power. Yeah, you got a little more zip out of it, Yeah, didn't you? yeah. Plus I uh, put in uh, a uh, three-quarter cam in it. Oh, cool. And uh, kind of made it and put uh, two carbs on it and uh, the Edelbrook heads. And nice. So, and so it's... Uh, um, Quite a bit different now. Uh, you have a, a lot of people interested in the in the vehicle, and I can understand why. Was this the original color scheme? It looks like. Yes, it, it was. Might have been, yeah. It was. Uh huh. Some people asked me about that, and I said, no, it was originally had black fenders, but they're definitely faded out over there. Oh yeah, you, yeah. You know, so this would have been in the sh in the storeroom when this was bought new. I bet this was quite the looker of a, yeah, of a vehicle, this, wasn't it? I've got the original title for this. Uh huh. And they paid. Uh, it paid a hundred and forty some dollars for it, I think. That's it for the whole vehicle. <laughs> Four hundred and thirty-six dollars and seventy-three cents, boys and girls. Bought you a brand new pickup in nineteen thirty-four. <laughs> Boy, wouldn't it be nice to have those days back again? <laughs> wow. Well, I'm really glad that you tracked this down because this is definitely something. And I'll tell you, to be honest, when we walked when we walked through originally this yeah. morning, it did catch my eye, but you weren't around or, or nobody was no, around. No, I was trying to go through and right. select vehicles right. and stuff. But Now, aside from the things that you've already told us, what is one of your favorite memories, maybe from back and when, when, when you used to drive it with your granddad or, or a favorite memory that you have with the restoration or? Well, the first, first time I... Uh, remembered this was uh, my granddad's nephew uh, was working for him and he had uh, been paralyzed and he only could use his left arm uh -huh. his right arm was paralyzed right but he worked and he drove this pickup and when he'd shift he'd stick his arm down through there and, oh and shift wow yeah and drive you know this way wow <laughs> Now, were, were you all farmers? Yes, in, uh, yes. In Amarillo? or No, near, in, in uh, Boy City, Oklahoma. Oh, Boy City. Okay, so there's the connection. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's 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 really neat. So you you guys probably grew up around knowing where my, my family is around Boy City. The Hickses, we all farmed oh, yeah. out there. Oh, yeah. Calvin, yep. Merle, and all those guys. Yep. That, those were my, my ancestors. Oh, is that right? Right. My, Calvin's my granddad. Oh, okay. So you guys probably hit some of the same auctions and stuff like that together. Well, see... There's the last tag that it was tagged right there. 1957. 1957. Well, I sure am glad you, uh, you 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 raised this one from the from the ashes. It's sure <laughs> a beautiful pickup. Yeah, thank you. If you don't mind, we'll take the camera and dismount it, and we'll walk around and get some tight shots. That's fine. All right. Well, thank you again. Very appreciate much it. appreciate it. Yes, sir.
we've got Jim Davidson here with us from Fitch, Texas, and he brought this 1944 pickup. I figured since we're on a pickup roll here, we just talked to a gentleman with the 34 Ford. Oh yeah. So yeah, we come over. We're, we're, yeah. Let's get this other pickup. Yeah. This is now. This is a little different kind of a breed here. It looks like maybe I don't know what all you got going on here, but tell me about it, Jim. This pickup is totally and completely fabricated. It's been chopped four and a half inches, and it's channeled three and a half inches over the frame. Four or four this way? No, the top has been chopped four, four and a half down. inches okay. down. I've re the, the firewall has been recessed four inches so the motor would fit in. Gotcha. So it's pretty cramped on the inside. It, it looks a little snug. Yeah, yeah, if I sell this thing, I'll have to sell it to a Smurf. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but <laughs> made the tilt bed uh, just something different, you know, and... Uh, now, it was a pickup to start with, right? It, uh, the only thing that... It was just a cab. I got you. Just okay. a cab is all it was. Okay, okay. The rest of it, these are uh, 44 fenders with 37 headlights. The rear fenders are car fenders. Okay. And they've been widened 7 inches, so they clear the rear tires whenever the bed tilts. Right, right. Uh, the interior I had done in Wichita, Kansas. It's got a Mustang... 302 HO motor in it. Nice. Which is high output. Sure, sure. The system here is what they call an induction 600 system. I mm -hmm. ordered it from Don Garlitz, which used to be a famous drag racer. Pro, pro stock, yeah. It's got his name autographed on the front of it, and I ordered it out of New Zealand. Not New Zealand? Yeah, come oh, out of New Zealand. Because Ford does a lot of building in New Zealand, don't well, they? Well, yeah, that plus Don Garlitz has a facility in New Zealand. Oh, I got gotcha. you. He's also got a museum in uh, Florida. Cool. But uh, I ordered this out of New Zealand. I've never, I'm sure there's some around, but I've, I've been to a lot of car shows and I've never seen another one. Right. This is the only one that I've really seen. Well, it's a but beautiful looking deal. I mean, how long did it take you to build this? It took uh, a little over a year. That's it? Be, yeah. Wow, you're little, fast. A little over, well, there was, other, <laughs> there was other guys that, that, that oh, okay. built on this, yeah. But uh, it's just something different. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, it, if I ever get rid of it, it, I'll never have one like it because it's it's, one off. it's different. I had one guy tell me, he said, you've got a unique truck. And I told him, I said, yeah, if you want to look at it, you unique up on it. <laughs> you know, so. Now, is this your first uh, attempt at something like this, a custom this is This is our first custom vehicle. Uh, the other guys that... that uh, built this. I've done a bunch of work on it, but actually they did a lot of work on it. And they're, they're, we're building the wife a truck right now. We're building her a 39. Oh, fun. Yeah. So it's That'll not it's not quite done yet. Now tell me about that. What is it going to be here for next year, maybe? It'll be here for next year. Good. It, it should be finished uh, probably, I'm hoping this year, but I don't know. It may be next year before it's and finished. And is it the same kind of a thing, or did she go a different direction? She went a different direction. I've got pictures of it, but uh, I, well, don't, I don't know if that'd be on okay. camera. It's, it's, a, it's a pickup, and it's 39. And a half. It's not chopped as severely as this one. It's only chopped two and a half inches, and she's got more room in the cab of hers. Right. And it's uh, got a straight axle <laughs> under it, and what to call it with a buggy spring. Right, right. And... Uh, Hers gonna be a nice truck. It's gonna be a nice truck. That's good. The, That's the, good. The same guy built in this one, you know, building hers, you know, and and I get them home, I'll probably have to finish it, you know, and stuff. Now, but, now did you buy this box to iron in, in a box? Is this a crate motor? No, this come out of a 1990 Mustang. So did you warm it up any? Or? No, you know, I thought about I thought about beefing it up, and I thought, you know, everybody does that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I want something where I don't have to worry about looking for a gas station. I understand. So I left it stock. It not, it don't vibrate the ground, and it's not really erratic, but it, it's just well, a stock motor. But this appears to me to be a pretty light vehicle. It is. It, it, I mean, it runs good. I would imagine. Don't get me wrong. I it would runs imagine good. that it gets down the road pretty quickly, right? Yeah. That's got a low car shifter in it, and that's why the shifter's up like it is. Oh, I got you. And, uh, we, got, uh, wait, we got one of the, your... Mustangs there. Uh, that might be your engine in there. Yeah. Probably not, but it could be. <laughs> yeah. You know, a, a lot of people like that. Now, the, we finished, the wife's truck gets finished. She's going to have kind of a hot rod motor in it. Oh, good. Yeah. But this one here, I just kept it stopped. Well, you that, can pull the other one on the trailer with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Okay, so when 
you think about this vehicle, tell me the, the most fun memory you have or what comes to your mind when you start telling people about it. What's the, what's the most important or most fun thing you think about when you... You know, that's a good question. I uh, thought it was. But it's... <laughs> You know, we just have a lot of fun. You know, we take it. You know, it's not it's not specifically a a, a winner at every show. You know, I mean, I've won with it, but it's not a big winner. We enjoy going and meeting people and socializing with people. Right. That's what we actually enjoy doing. So to you, it's a way to get some yeah. comradeship, some some friendships, but going exactly. Yeah, and you know, we like to talk vehicles. We're gearheads, you know. Oh, yeah. And a lot of people, gearheads, you know, they come up and ask about it and stuff. I, I enjoy that, you know. I, I'm, I'm not all about winning a plaque, you know, and all that stuff. I'm about socializing with people, finding out what they have, yeah. you know, and picking up some ideas, you right, know. Right. That's what it's all about is, is, is socializing with people. How many car shows have you been to, do you think? Oh, my gosh. I've had this vehicle five years. Okay. I'd hate to guess that the car so shows you, up. So you've been around. Too. Have you been yeah. here before? I have been here. It's been a couple of years since I've been here. Yeah, I don't. I didn't remember it. Yeah, we had. I can't remember other stuff that kind of interfered with us coming up here. But Hooker's got a, a really good car show. Oh, this is one and of the best car shows that I go to. They have a fantastic turnout. And we just enjoy coming up here. Yeah. You know, but uh, this is our first time we've been back probably in a couple of years. I got you. So we also belong to the old school. Uh, car club out of Amarillo, Texas. Oh, and you guys yeah. have a good car show up there with that deal, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got a lot of car shows down there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the whole car club come up here. I think we've got eight or nine members that come up here with their good cars. Good deal. Good so, deal. Yeah, we, we, we enjoy it. We enjoy it. It's a good show. Well, I sure appreciate you taking a few minutes to, to talk to us about your vehicle. And we'll, we'll get the camera and go around and do some close-ups if you don't mind. No, I don't mind. Jim, thank yep. you so much. Okay. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. So we're still on a pickup kick. We've got Brian Brewer with us here from Downhart, Texas. He's yes. brought this really, really gorgeous 65 Ford pickup. Off camera, you said it was your high school truck. Yes. I have to assume there's some stories that go along with that. Oh, this truck has seen a lot. Let's hear some. Uh, I built it my senior year in high school. Uh, it was my only transportation until I got married three years later. Uh, raised the kids in it. Had a, a fender bender or a time or two and had to had to rebuild it once then and later in life uh, a lady ran into me had to rebuild it that time that time I went all the way to the ground started to frame I mean from the frame up rebuilt motors transmissions completely built the truck right nice and uh, I've been offered some decent money for it but I would never I wouldn't take a million dollars for it oh I mean, it's a pretty my, truck my, my children are arguing who's going to inherit it. <laughs> <laughs> so frame off from ground done, up, done. Every, every nut and bolt. Every nut and bolt has been painted. My hat's off to you, my friend, because that is a job. A lot of it I've done by myself. My son's helped me some. Uh, friends come over and do help me with the heavy stuff. Sure. Uh, but it was it was a five-year process. But I had a blast. 
So you 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 bought it in high school. Who did you who did you get it from? Was it a family heirloom handed down to no, you then? Or? Uh, no, I had a 1958 Chevy pickup, and then I, we seen this truck, and I told my mom I, I want that truck. So I actually sold the 58 pickup to build this the first time. There you go. And uh, it was it was it wasn't as nice, you know. I mean, it was cool. We built it and through the years. It's gotten way prettier, but, right? Uh, it's always been red. Now, was it a was it a uh, like a field pickup then? No, it was actually an old. A gas company pickup. Ah, okay. Still had the deal on the top where the antenna went. Right. And uh, it's a, just a plain. It was the plain Jane you could get. No radio. No nothing in it. Strip down and version. Strip down to, to version. Put in the service unit. When we when you started it, smoke would roll out from underneath <laughs> it. You know. And then I found a, a, a Thunderbird 390 out of a Thunderbird. Oh yeah, in. there you go. And uh, still had the truck four speed for years. And uh, it just. As, as the years went, you did this, you did that, and you did this. And this last time I went through and put power steering, the lowering 20 I-beam, uh, kept it original, first year 20 I-beam. Right. And uh, it was it was fun. Yeah. It was enjoyable. Yeah, it sounds like, an, I can tell you've got a lot of great memories. My wife calls it my therapist when I go to the shop. <laughs> Work out all your demons in there. Yeah, go in there. You go to the shop, <laughs> I'll go to the shop. So, What's the, when you think about your pickup, and, and then I don't know if you can pick the, one of these out, but what is your best memory or your, or your most fun memory of the pickup? That's a tall order, I know, because you've had it for so long. Uh, well, here just a while back, uh, one of the best little memories I got, uh, my little granddaughter. She, we just got her, they, my son had just married a, a girl that had a little girl. Right. And uh, she was ours instantly from then on. Good. I took her out and let her go down a dirt road and she sat on my lap and she just drove from bar ditch to bar ditch. There you go. You know, and it hadn't been painted. I, it was all put together, but I hadn't painted it yet. I just let her drive all the way down that road and then she just had the time of her life. That is great. Those so, are great memories. Oh, yeah. And she'll remember that for, for yeah, her she's whole ten, life. Yeah, she's 10 years old now. Yeah. So. That's yeah, awesome. She still, we just talked about it the other day. She goes, I remember doing that. That's so. awesome. Now, you said off camera that you have several vehicles here that you brought. I've got um, a 1965 Mustang. <laughs> Uh, a 1966 Mustang, I'm sorry. I put a little uh, 302 out of a 79 Cobra in it. see the 302 emblem on it. Yeah, yeah, it runs good. I've got a 1950 Ford pickup that I uh, put a little Chevy motor in it. I know my, my Ford friends are... There you are, go. There you go. <coughs> they, they're me giving here. me, hard, they're me, giving so, me a hard go. time, but... Uh, <laughs> That's uh, okay. I'm all Chevrolet guys, so that makes me happy. I know. I'm an all <laughs> Ford guy mostly, so... <laughs> <laughs> so why why breed it? Why breed it with the bow tie? I, I, it was there I had. Okay. It was there okay, I had. Okay. I understand. You know? I understand. So <laughs> And I drive it every day, you know. Now you you guys are connected with the club over there, yeah? We are the Dalhart Cruisers. Okay. Uh, really good club. We 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 give a car away every year. We sell 350 chances on it. Uh, the money we raise off this car, we give back to the community. <clears throat> we don't keep a dime. <coughs> Excuse me. We keep we keep just enough money to buy another car for the next year start all over again there's 50 plus members in our club now we're a growing club which is rare. strange yeah that's uh, rare for right now i mean we're it's just a bunch of good friends and people a lot of shops everybody hangs out at people's shops right uh, uh, well that's really club. admirable that you guys are club. doing something like that yes. for the community and and giving it all back that's, give it all uh, back yeah that's what it's for we don't we don't spend any of it on us we give it away if someone were want to, wanting to uh, join your club what is the way for them to contact you you got some phone numbers facebook names? facebook it's called cars dalhart cruisers and it's c-r-u-z-e-r-s cruisers <coughs> excuse me and it's that's the best way to find us find our information so it's cars oh, yeah. dalhart cruisers now, Jay Williamson is a super good friend of mine. I've known that guy for forever and ever. He's the one that put me in contact with you today. Is he part of the club? Yes, Jay's, Jay's part of everybody's club. Isn't he just the best? Jay's, Jay's always there. And I asked him to do an interview with us, and he, he declined politely. Actually, maybe not quite so politely, but... Well, you would lose viewers. You would lose... <laughs> they, they, you, nobody would they, would... they would turn the TV off. But I, I knew I had to at least mention his name and see what, how, how he was received over there amongst you guys. Oh, he's, he's, he's uh, the, the family. He's part of the family. He's always that way. Oh, he's always there. Jay and I used to build a lot of engines together <laughs> in the machine shop there in Guyman. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I've missed being around him, but it was fun to get to see him again and talk to him. So, And I do appreciate you taking the you time betcha. to share some stories with us. Uh, we're going to take the camera. Walk around the pickup, maybe get the Mustang and the other pickup if you don't mind. You betcha. Go get them. All right. Thank, thank you, you very much. Appreciate it. You betcha.
this 2018 hooker car show 12 12 years 12. yes 12 years that's a long time <laughs> it is. if you were 24 you were 12 when this thing started yes. that's crazy that's right right that's right you grew up with it how, how, how is it going how did it go oh it's going wonderful it's a beautiful day absolutely beautiful i was sitting here and watching the people walk by and there's every age uh, every size uh, just enjoying families together and friends and see that group of girls there I yeah? See. yeah and they just seem to come down and have a really good time super happy and i will say i i want to remark that the, when i come here for this everybody is so friendly yes no bickering no yes, every, none of that it's calm or just strolling along looking at the cars visiting with people happy go lucky yep. yep so do we have a car count for the year i think I, last i looked it was 191 191 which is awesome which is awesome it is it down is down a little bit but i think we talked about off camera that Potentially some bad weather may have may have shied some folks. A heavy mist at seven o'clock <laughs> and people calling, are you still having the show? Right. Yes. Right. Well, and there's a lot of of farm people out, you know, that live out in the country that have muddy roads. Absolutely. And there, was, there was one guy I talked to, he had a mile of muddy roads, so yeah. he, he came, he brought something, but yeah. But, and it's happened before, uh, but we still, I mean, everybody's having a good time and we've accomplished what we set to do. Well, I talked to uh, a person that has a car club in Amarillo and they're part of the, they're part of the car club, they have car shows. He made the comment that this is one of the, the best car shows he, he knows of. I keep hearing so that. that. That should make you feel good. It makes me feel wonderful. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, we're very proud of that. Uh, we've heard that people go to other car shows talking about our car show. That should make you feel good yes. as well. I, it does. Uh, yeah. And we just keep going, I guess. You know, we'll do it again. Yeah. We'll always do it again. And I mean, the weather today to me seems oh. perfect. Now, it I is. get that it might have shied some people away. It is. Um, but. If you made made the trip, you, you were rewarded. Yes, yes. And we have people from quite a distance away. I haven't actually checked and see how far they've come. I have an entry for that long yes. long drive. Tony Mathis that works with us at PTCI. Yes. Their their relatives came. Her second cousin or something like that came from Mount Pleasant, Tennessee. 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 How many miles? They said a thousand There's miles. A thousand. thousand miles. Now, I don't know how that fits That's, in the, the scheme of long distance. That is pretty entry. good. They brought a 1950 uh, Ford or something, maybe Cadillac yeah. Dodge. I can't remember what it was. I'm going to go walk the show. I've, I've never just walked the show. So, what? And I'm oh, gonna you're going to go walk that. the show? No. Uh, some great I've cars. got all my work done now, and we have had so much help. I don't know if you're uh, familiar with HALO. It's a Hispanic American mm -hmm. leadership organization, and they have 30 some members, and they sent down probably 15 this morning, seven o'clock. They helped with parking cars. They helped with registration. They ran errands. They set up the little cars. They've just been all over the place. Yeah, HALO's a great organization oh from goodness. OPSU, correct? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Uh, they really get in and lend a hand. Um, yes. They're, they're, a, yeah, they're very good volunteers. And it, it really makes me feel really good. The high school kids are interested in doing community oh, yeah. service and enjoying it. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. talk to me then, since we kind of entered that doorway, talk to me about some of your, um, by name, some of your uh, assistants, some of your Our staff. Our assistants, of course, there's Mark Davis sitting over there. Mark, Mark! Mark I see him over Davis, there. <laughs> he keeps the noise going, the music going. He, he announces everything and everybody. He kind of has he, his fingers yes, in everything, doesn't he? He's done it every year. and uh, Hooker Bulldog Network. Yes, big. he does that. Yeah. Yep, he's, uh, he's awesome, yeah. 
Um, of course, I have to say my husband, he, he kind of drags a little bit with me, but he'll, he'll do anything. He was the to first person I saw go. this morning when I rolled in. I know. I was like, oh, there, I know. there he is. I see him. He's been all over. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we have uh, Doug Toombs, uh, Terry Dees, uh, my, of course, my daughter in law, and my son, uh, Dennis and Julie. They just they, they help tremendously. And they've got friends in there helping, Tammy and uh, Ray, Ray Ann, and I can't name all of them. They're, we've, we've had more help this year than we've ever had before. Steve Walton, he's, he's oh my still God. here. Yes, Steve is running the swap meet, and he's down there, and he's been doing that for the last two years now, mm -hmm. and it's been doing very well. And uh, he makes sure, well, they were out yesterday with Tri-County, putting up there's a one of our speaker wires had broken oh no yes to make sure that we had the sound all over downtown sounds great the yes. sound you there you can't go anywhere and not hear perfect that's right crystal clear the sound. whole three blocks and and i've got to put a shout out to hooker equity they called us about six years ago or seven and they said we have a we have a chance to get some money if you can use it for the benefit of Hooker, we'll give it to you and we'll match the grant. And they gave us enough money to buy speakers for all three blocks to, this is what they bought. Uh, we, the city of Hooker and the Hooker Car Show and the Chamber bought a couple more just to fill it out to get down the side streets. But yes, it covers the whole town. And That's great. We, we play music every day. So, That's awesome. Yeah, but but Hooker Equity was the one that made that possible. Bring a little happiness to downtown, huh? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. To see the you know skipping in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> so yep. um, I, we've been talk, talking about the PA system. We've been hearing them give away. Yes. Let's talk about the giveaways. How are we doing? Oh, we're doing. We do a uh, hundred dollars every thirty minutes, and we're doing two prizes every thirty minutes. That's at least a hundred, hundred and twenty-five dollar value. Right. And then we had some bonus things. Mothers gave us some buckets, a uh, hundred dollar value. We're adding that to the hourly drawings. Cool. And then at the end, we'll have two $500 drawings uh, for the entrance. And then if you want to a chance to win a hundred, uh, another $500, you can enter your name and, and choose your favorite car in the People's Choice. And all of those tickets go back in and we'll, we'll give them $500. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You guys give away a lot of cash and prizes. Over 15000 that's crazy. Every penny that we have donated to us goes back out today. So you come here, you get to see a great car show, and you have a chance to win a lot of cool stuff or just yeah. flat out money. Yeah. We have a couple of uh, merchant drawings too, and we've had for several years, Meals Ideal does a rolled rib, and you just go in and enter, and they've given that out every year. And then Awesome Nails over there gives four pedicures every year. And uh, yeah. I do your nail, I do your nail. Yeah. So, yeah, it, the whole town gets together. That's good. They do. They do. And that's the way it should be. Yeah. I don't think a lot of towns still do it that way, but thankfully your town does. Yes, yes. And I think it's getting better every year, so yeah. I will agree. Yeah. I will agree. It is. Uh, yeah, and it's getting to the point where we've been doing so many of these for so long that even though new people come to the show uh -huh. my inherent likes of vehicles are still the same they don't change uh -huh. and so i'll see something and i'll and i'll go to it wanting to talk to the person and turns out i talked to them three years ago <laughs> or i talked to them you know however uh -huh. long ago uh -huh. and they and they'll say something like i'll talk to you again but you already we already did this and it's like oh well, okay <laughs> let's get somebody new one. on camera then and <laughs> yeah and it's getting harder to find even even the people that travel from distance. And we have some different, unique uh, vehicles today. I mean, there's there's some that haven't been here before oh, no, that are very that haven't been here, yeah. very unique. Well, yeah. and, and that crew from Downhart that they haven't oh, been here my yet. Goodness. They yes. they brought some great vehicles. Yes, there's there's some of our uh, ones that we can rely on. The the group from Amarillo has become uh, mm -hmm. very yeah. yeah. So I mean. 
overall, this is uh, it seems like another success. I think so. Yes. And you will help me and, and send me the winners when you at the end of the day because we'll have to unfortunately end our broadcast uh, okay. here pretty quick. Uh, I can do that. And then and you'll send me the winners and, and all the sponsors. the sponsors. And we'll we put that into the sponsors. Yeah. Right, right. We'll put that into the end of the uh, into the uh, into the production and okay. so that everybody can see and know what happened and okay. Sounds good. I think it's going to be a, a, a success. Yep. But look at this weather. It's Who awesome. Think of that. <laughs> oh, and the, the flyover. That was really, really fun. <laughs> yes. At first, yes. it was pretty low, and I liked it. Yes. It was exciting. Fast and low, <laughs> yes. Now, who is that? Aaron Witt. Aaron Witt. He's a farmer here. And and I guess that's an older plane, a 57-something. I couldn't tell you. Yeah. It passed me so fast, it was a blur. <laughs> yeah. No, and then they videoed. They did that from, last from year. From the plane? They, with the second trip over, they Oh, good. I, I waved the second trip. Good. The first time was so fast. I I'm sure we can see you. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm pretty big, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, Linda, thank you very much oh, for letting us come hey, up and Sean, share some of the day. And you know we appreciate you very much. I want, well, well, on telephone. You know, our, our cooperations around here, Tri-County and Pan on Telephone, have, have just have been so supportive. Well, Very we try. supportive. That's we yes, are I a cooperative. PTC has yeah. a cooperative, and there, right in the right in the name of what we are, says what we do. Yeah, we, we help people. So yeah, uh, yeah. Looking forward to next year already. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be yeah. We usually start. It's it's good to do it. You know, right away. Right. If you have any suggestions or any changes we need to do to add to our list. You guys have a website, yes? Yes. Hookercarshow.com. Hookercarshow.com. And we'll give you this footage so you can put it on your website. Perfect. And so hookercarshow.com. Also, there's entrance forms and all sorts of stuff there, right? Yes, yes. So for next and year, if you miss this And we try to get year, as many pictures on there, too, uh, of the cars that's been here. Right, right. And the wards, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up and go then. Okay. Thank you very much. You're very welcome.